one, it's Miriam with a Y. Let's have some fun with alcohol inks and a tool you maybe don't think about or maybe even know about. The ruling pen. <laughs> now this tool was created for technical drawings to be used with ink, but today we aren't going to use it with ink exactly, but with masking fluid to block ink. It's a fun process that gives a wonderful effect. So let's do this. First, let me give you a quick tour of a ruling pen. Its main features are the two blades. The opening between the blades can be adjusted with this screw. Even though the space between the two blades is open, surface tension makes it possible for this pen to hold a liquid between the blades. And as a result, we can use the pen to draw with that liquid. And we'll control the width of the line that we draw with the screw. To make it easy to load the pen, I've got a little bit of masking fluid in this silicone cup. Just by dipping the pen in, some fluid gets sucked in between the blades. And I can immediately start to draw. Now I've noticed that the amount of pressure I apply as I'm drawing can impact the amount of liquid that comes out. But with masking fluid, it really doesn't matter. Even the driest looking line is enough to block ink. So if you can see the line on your Yupo or graphics, opaque white or whatever it is you're drawing on, if you can see a line that came out of the pen, it is enough to block ink. Now, if you're not familiar with masking fluid, it's just a quick drying liquid latex that can easily be rubbed off once it's dry. So for this little demonstration, I've made a series of lines. Some were wetter than others, and some were kind of dry looking. And by adjusting the screw, the group on the left has wider lines. Let's flood this whole thing now with some alcohol ink and see what we get. Make sure that the drawn lines with that you did with the masking fluid is completely dry before adding ink. And then <laughs> make sure your ink is completely dry before rubbing off your mask. Because if it's not, <laughs> as you'll see in the bottom right corner, you'll rub ink into the nice masked areas that you worked to make. <laughs> now that we understand how this works, let's draw something. I'm shooting for something with some autumn flare. Now, if impromptu drawing isn't something you feel comfortable doing, you can always very lightly sketch out your design first with a pencil and then erase it back so that it's even lighter and then paint your masking fluid right over those lines. Now, because I'm left-handed, I'm starting my drawing on the right and moving toward the left so as not to disturb my work as it's drying. And also because masking fluid is a tad sticky even once it is dry. I'm working on graphics opaque white craft plastic because it cleans perfectly if I make a boo-boo with ink later, because I'm gonna maybe want to go back down to white in certain areas, and graphics is really good for that. I want to warn you about buying a pen. While shopping online for ruling pens, I saw some that seemed like a bargain, inexpensive sets of three, for example. And I got one of those, and all three pens were defective. The blades didn't line up. On one of them, um, the, the two blades weren't even the same length exactly. So I ordered another one, and this one works perfectly. And I've linked that one below. As you draw, you want to vary the width of your lines now and then, maybe. And to emphasize some lines, you might want wider lines, or to minimize the importance of others, you might want thinner lines. 
you'll quickly get the hang of the angle that works best for you when you hold the pen and the size of the opening you prefer to get the width of the line that you want. For those of you who may have successfully used masking fluid with a brush of some sort in the past, if you're wondering, yeah, right, I, I can just use that. Why would I need a rolling pen over a brush or whatever other tool you might be using with masking fluid? The main reasons are, one, control. Overall, using a ruling pen is like writing with a pen or a pencil. I mean, you're holding it basically the same way. And, you know, if you've ever tried signing your name with a paintbrush, for example, yeah, that's never fun. This is much easier. And another nice aspect of the ruling pen is that it allows you to draw for longer periods between reloading. So like a paintbrush with masking fluid, you'd have to reload more often. Or a silicone tool, you'd have to reload more often. This you can draw for quite a bit. Because of the rapid drying nature of masking fluid, after you've been working for a while, the pen will start to clog up with dry masking fluid. And the, what I've found works really well to clean that out is an old toothbrush. I just drag it between the blades a couple of times and I'm good to resume my work. And those of you who also watercolor may be familiar with this pen and using it for masking fluid this way. In the watercolor world, masking fluid can occasionally cause damage to watercolor paper and become difficult to remove. Lucky for us, when using Graphics Opaque White, there is absolutely no risk of that. Masking fluid will have zero negative impact on the graphics. It will rub off cleanly every single time. Okay, so now I have my drawing all done. I could paint the whole piece in one color now let's say brown for fall, and then rub off the mask and have a bright white drawing against a brown background. But instead, let's mimic a style called batik. I'll need a paintbrush or two, inks and colors that I like, and a palette. I'm choosing marabou inks for my inner painting because they bloom a tad less than other inks, and that's an advantage for this. I'll also need some isopropyl alcohol. 99 or 91% will work nicely. For the batik look, I'm painting different colors within the mask lines that I drew earlier. So I'm pretty much coloring in between the lines. <laughs> I'm going to want to be a little gentle with my brush so as not to disturb my mask lines and accidentally rub them off before I'm ready. Now, if you do rub one off or part of one accidentally, just clean off the area, you know, take the ink away and put your line back in with masking fluid. Just make sure to connect the new wet line with the original dry lines and the new addition will attach seamlessly. You'll never know that a mistake had been made. For this painting, I've chosen fall colors for the leaves, and I've had some fun giving them variegated looks. I chose red for my apple, since I had some red cranberries. I thought that would be fun for some bright pops of color. And then for the pumpkins, I chose red orange and tangerine, which I kind of yellowed down a little bit. I added a little brown to bring out the ridges in the pumpkins, too. Now that my color is down for the batik look, I need to protect all that color, so I'll mask it. Since I'm doing larger areas, I've enlarged the opening between the blades of the pen, and now I can cover more ground faster. Now be super careful here. Try to have the pen 
almost float over the painting so as not to disturb your original mask lines. Now, because the pen is metal, so it's a little more aggressive than your paintbrush. So the risk of scraping parts of a mask line are greater. Interior lines like the veins of a leaf or the ridges that I put in the pumpkins, those aren't critical because the new mask you're putting is going to protect those areas again. So even if you remove those lines entirely by accident, it would be fine as long as you're recovering it with some mask. Um, it's the outlines of your elements, like the outline of the pumpkin, the outline of the leaves. That's what you really want to make sure you don't disturb. For big areas, dropping some fluid right on the painting and then spreading it is faster. So that's kind of what I ended up doing here for the pumpkins. Tilting the pen almost on its side is also a great way to get things done pretty quickly because it's going to act almost like a squeegee for you. Before moving on to the next step, check to make sure if that you haven't missed a spot. It's going to be easy to see because dry masking fluid is pretty shiny and kind of grainy looking even. So any uncovered spots will really stick out. For my last inking step, I'm going to need a background. How about a purpley and blue combo? That should be a good contrast to our reds and oranges and muted greens. I start out by wetting my background with some isopropyl alcohol to make it easier for the inks to flow. The inks that I'm using have already been thinned down with alcohol as well. So that should all keep it from getting too dark. But you might prefer a much darker background or even a black background could be wonderfully dramatic. That part is all up to you and your design decisions. Now me, I tend to like a ripped paper edge for a more organic look to my paintings. So for the top and bottom, I'm going to achieve that by letting some alcohol clean away the ink but I'm just going to use the tip of the bottle and kind of draw in an organic way. This works beautifully on graphics opaque white because it's incredibly resistant to staining. So getting back down to the white is easy peasy. Okay, next steps, the reveal. And if you haven't yet done so, make sure to subscribe for more projects and to find out what else the wonderful ruling pen can do, because I've got a couple more fun projects coming up with this fun tool. For the most part, as you saw earlier, I can rub this off with my finger because we're working on synthetic paper and masking fluid comes up from that pretty easily. But there is a tool called a rubber cement pickup which some people use to rub away masking fluid. I didn't need it, but I wanted you to know that it existed. After looking at the right side, I felt I could use a touch of red over there too. So I enlarged the <laughs> berry-like things at the ends of those branches. And then I used an alcohol marker and colored in some red berries. And now I'm happy. <laughs> now I missed a couple of spots with the mask right here, but I don't know. I almost think it adds something. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm rationalizing. I don't know, but I, I, I just, I just don't mind it. But you know, if I really did mind it, this would be pretty easy to repair. So how do you think this turned out? Give it a thumbs up if you liked the project and tell me in the comments what thoughts and ideas are popping up for you. And come show off anything you make in my alcohol ink and doodle loving Facebook group. We would love to have you. 
Links for everything I used are in the description box below the video. It's kind of cool. Absolutely everything I use can be bought from one location. <laughs> May the inks be kind to you all. Let your creative nature shine, and may you be safe. See you soon. Bye now.